Hi, welcome to Film Crew. I'm Scott, this is Scoo, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do the top 10 movie hero swords. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go through this... Get and... to the point! Looks like you put a sword to a lightsaber fight. <laughs> So any decent hero needs a decent weapon. Absolutely. And of course one of the best weapons that you can have in cinema is a sword. Swords have been around forever. Exactly. Well, since they created swords. And movie swords have been around since they created movies. Right? This is very true. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've done, right, is we've compiled a list out of, of our top 10 favourite movie swords. Yep. Um, these are from live action movies only, no cartoons or comics or anything like that, just yep. live action movie swords. And that's based on criteria of how iconic they are, how cool they are, yeah. kill count, how effective they are, and our own personal biases. Yeah. <laughs> so let's begin. Number 10. Excalibur. Now, of course, being one of the most famous swords in all of literary history, yeah. Excalibur deserves a place on this list. Absolutely. It uh, appeared in a 1980 movie, Excalibur. And technically, it also appeared in Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. That is true. Uh, along with pretty much every single King Arthur movie that you've had. And as I say, because it is one of the most famous swords in all of literature, it really should be on the list. Absolutely, but the reason it's at number 10, from our point of view, I think is when you sort of see the sword, it's it's just a very standard looking sword. Yeah. Isn't it? There hasn't been a, a really outstanding, iconic movie version of Excalibur no. that really would catapult it much higher on the list mm. if we had that in a really good King Arthur movie. So, But it is Excalibur, everybody knows the name of it, so it's definitely made the list Absolutely. at number 10. Yep. The Power Sword from Masters of the Universe. Iconic. Absolutely. <laughs> now a lot of people will find that the sword is probably more iconic in the toy or yeah. the cartoon series, yeah. but it still looks pretty awesome in the not very awesome movie, Yeah. and was used as a primary weapon for Dolph Lundgren's He-Man, yeah. and you know, it was a central part of the key final battle between He-Man and Skeletor, which was actually pretty cool given the fact that they had no budget to film it and basically just... <laughs> Did it all with lights and a blank set. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it didn't quite reach that kind of epic level that we're really looking forward to put yeah. it higher on the list. So that's why we've got it at number nine. Yeah. It's definitely on the list of that level because of the the cachet that it carries with it from its other media versions. Yeah. But it's still a nice looking sword, so it should be on the list as well. Sting from the Middle Earth movies. Very, very well known sword. Absolutely. Uh, it's killed a lot of orcs. It glows blue when orcs are near. Which is a, a nice little feature. Also, if you want to read while you're in the company of orcs, that'll help <laughs> work it as well. Yeah. Very cool design. Very cool. The uh, team at Weta did a really nice design which sort of captures mm. the iconic shape of it. Some really nice details. Elven blade, isn't it? Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why it's probably not higher up the list because it is kind of really an elven dagger mm. rather than a full-on sword. A glorified letter opener. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but of course it did have a significant part to play in both the Hobbit trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy so it deserves to be on the list as well. Um, just you know, perhaps not as high as some other ones which we might get to a little bit later on. Braveheart's iconic sword Claymore from Braveheart the movie. Mm -hmm. This sword is fantastic. This sword killed a lot of people. It is a huge, big, um, what's it called? A Not a broadsword, but a... Bastard. A bastard sword. Yeah. And, um, it's, yeah, it's all over the marketing for that mm. movie. It's it, it helped free a country. Absolutely. And it's certainly a case of it may not have the individual nature that a lot of these other swords have, but it is used so much in all the imagery of the film and its marketing that when you think of... Braveheart, you think of this big giant ass sword. Yeah. And it's Scottish. The Sword of the Daywalker, Blade. Mm. Now, Blade was probably the first major Marvel movie which was actually a success, even if they sort of changed things quite radically from the comics <laughs> and made it more sort of a horror action movie, it was still really impactful for the time and it was really the precursor to a lot of the big superhero movie success that we have now. Yeah. And part of that is due to the fact that Wesley Snipes had this kick-ass sword for slicing vampires' heads off. Beautiful looking sword, yep. it killed a lot of vampires, uh -huh. and it had a little booby trap in the handle. Yeah. 
it's one of those nice things which they set up early in the film and it really paid off later on. And of course we get to see it through two sequels as well, so it really created an iconic weapon for a comic book character who made the leap to the big screen ahead of pretty much everybody else. I mean the movie's called Blade. He's gotta have a good blade, yep. and he does have a good blade. Yep. McLeod's katana. Highlander. Yeah. Now this was handed down to him, uh, well, sort of handed down to him after the death of Ramirez. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's basically just a regular looking katana, but it's special. It is. Now, it was forged by a guy called Masamuni mm -hmm. back in 590-something BC. BC. And he used a very cool technique of folding the metal several hundred times to create a razor-sharp edge on it. And that's a, a technique which wouldn't become commonplace until mm -hmm. about the 14th century. So yeah. we're talking about something which is supposedly about 2,000 years ahead of where it really should be. Absolutely. So, so for that reason, and the fact it's wielded by two immortals... Well, I'd, I'd be happy having it on this list just because it was wielded by Sean Connery, myself. But which it was. Fact, the fact that you've got both McLeod and Ramirez mm. using this weapon is fantastic and Highlander is something which again relies on swords yep. to really make the whole franchise work yep. um, so this is probably the most iconic sword from that entire series and deserves to be at the number five position Anduru mm. from Lord of the Rings uh, forged from the shards of Narsil which we saw in the prologue of Fellowship of the Ring uh, the sword is probably the culmination of the Lord of the Rings story. Um, so it doesn't really play too much into the Hobbit era of Middle-earth, but it was introduced in one of the first few shots of the first film. It had a huge impact, even just seeing it lying in shards uh, in Rivendell. Looks really incredible and has a really powerful message. Beautiful looking sword, kills a lot of goblins and orcs. Yeah, beautifully uh, designed by Weta, so go the Kiwis. Yeah, Just cool. Yeah. One of my favourite swords, the Atlantean from Conan the Barbarian. It's a great sword and it has such mystery behind it. It does. Now, Conan finds this in a sort of cave. Um, there's a skeleton there and a bunch of other dudes. They're all dead and he finds the sword and he takes it. It's a beautiful sword. It's responsible for chopping the heads off a lot of people <laughs> and for bringing down a cult. So, thumbs up. That's a good sword. If there's one sword that you should have swung around by Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's that sword. And it really does look nicely different from most other movie swords that we see, in that it does have its own unique design. So swords clearly play an integral part of the Conan series, and that's the most awesome sword in all of Conan. The Hattori Hanzo Katana, used by the Bride in Kill Bill. Yeah, it's forged by a master sword maker, yep. Hattori Hanzo, and man, it slaughters a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. It's part of one of the most iconic action sequences of the past 20 years. It helped redefine uh, sword action in movies and really brought that back to a prominence in a way which very few things had prior to that. At the end of the day, it looks just like every other katana. It does. But there is something special about it. I don't know what it is, but there is something special about it. There's, and that's why it's a number two. It has this history. It has a lot of use. And you can't really picture the bride without mm. the yellow and black tracksuit and the sword. It's iconic and integral to that character. Before we get to the number one slot, here's a few honourable mentions. The Kurgan's Broadsword from Highlander. Now, I love the sword because if nothing else, you've got an awesome gearing up sequence. Mm. And I love gearing up sequences anyway. And to do it with a sword and Clancy Brown in it. Yeah. Badass. It's a sword you carry around in a suitcase, you yep. put it together, it's even got a bits that just go ching, and it's just huge. Yep. It's as big as he is. The next two swords aren't really given a name or anything like that, they're not really iconic, but it's they're wielded by people who are iconic. Absolutely. And that's the real reason that they're not on the list itself. In this instance, we're looking at Jack Sparrow's sword and Zorro's sword. Both of these guys are fantastic movie cinematic sword slinging heroes yeah. and they do incredible action sequences with them but really they don't have their own sword as such they no. pretty much just pick up one which happens to be around and use that that's why it gets an honorable mention is because yeah. it's a they're they're great swordsmen themselves but the mm. sword itself is just a nameless sword it could be any sword yeah luke's, luke's lightsaber, lightsaber. Now, I don't think any weapon sums up Star Wars better than the lightsaber. It's a sword, 
but it's got a laser as a blade. So yeah. it's a perfect fusion of science fiction and fantasy. And um, when you're talking about would this sword beat any other sword in, in a fight? Yes, it would. Of course yes. it would. It would chop it in half instantly. Uh -huh. um, it's super iconic. Everybody knows the lightsaber. Yeah. Is it a sword in a traditional sense? No. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Absolutely. Keep going. Um, it's great. I love it. I want to marry it. There we go. <laughs> Looking specifically at all lightsabers, we've chosen Anakin Skywalker's slash Luke Skywalker's one that we've seen in episodes 3, 4, and 5, yep. possibly 2, and in The Force Awakens. Yeah. It has a history to it, doesn't it? Yes. It's handed down from father to son. Mm -hmm. Somewhere when he got his legs chopped off, he said, give yeah. this to my son. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's in the special, special edition of <laughs> episode 3. Yeah. The design is really good. The yep. bright blue blade. Mm -hmm. And the sound, of course. Yeah. They're all wonderful things. The, the, I mean, the sound alone has made it so that something that any kid can play with in their own imagination. Just to be making a hum and a, a swinging sound. Yeah. To take a sword into the sci-fi realm yep. is excellent. Visual fantasy uh, elements. And I just love it. Absolutely. And that's why it's number one. Absolutely. No question whatsoever. Definitely the lightsaber. The most iconic weapon in all of film history. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! So that's our list of the ten most iconic hero saws in all of film history. Did we leave any off the list? Let us know down below. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, subscribe to our channel. We're out of here for now. But we'll be back. Well, one of us will. <laughs>